And we're back, and it's Inside Tennessee. We are talking with the uh, just finished his term, Herbert Slatery, the Tennessee Attorney General, and we're talking a little bit about abortion. Uh, Don Bosch had one quick follow up. Don, go ahead. Uh, uh, Herb, we left that last block with you saying that this is a question that should be left to the states, and that argument has historically been made. Uh, it's been suggested, at least in one of the opinions, that maybe the right to same sex marriage, uh, constitutionally based, or the right even to uh, mixed race marriages, those may need to be left to the states too. We go all the way back to this argument being part of the states' rights and slavery that caused the Civil War. In your opinion, where is that line that where it's federally constitutionally protected versus a right of the state to decide? I think the only thing you can do, Don, is rely upon the precedent that, that's already uh, been said in the Dobbs case. It, you know, one thing about this court uh, is it limits its decisions to the facts that are before it in that particular issue and then does not go any further. And um, I think they did that with the Dobbs, uh, the Dobbs decision. They did that with Bostock. Uh, and so they're going to they limit it to those particular facts and and those are questions i know justice thomas raised a couple of those questions and uh in his con in, in his concurrence to and dobbs but um i think those are questions for future days and and today we're you know we're, we're dealing with the ramifications of of dobbs and the policy issues and questions and frankly i think it's a it, this is democracy at work it's it's messy um and but the people and their representatives are the ones that are struggling with the issue and not uh, not unelected, you know, federal judges. Messy it is. Eddie Smith, you want to jump in? Any questions in regards to this topic? Uh, no really big questions around this, except, you know, uh, General Slatery, just to kind of clear up, because there's been a lot of discussion out there about uh, is the word exemption in the bill or is it not? And it is not, but we do have the affirmative defense. So I want to make sure that you can kind of clearly help people understand what the affirmative defense means because it's against the doctors and not against the woman who would be having the abortion. That's correct. Uh, all the legislation is pointed at the providers, not the women. Um, and, in it, and under this particular law, it, uh, it, and what's missing in all of this is the prosecu prosecutor, excuse me, the, the discretion of the prosecutor to charge the offense. And uh, Don's you know, pretty uh, very well aware of this. They, they, they have broad discretion as to whether they they were going to bring a, bring charges. So that is the first question. But once they do bring charges, then um, then the, then there are affirmative defenses under the statute available to the doctor or the provider, um, and they just they would assert it. Uh, it's not necessarily an exemption, uh, but it is an affirmative defense. Let's shift topics, and, gentlemen, and uh, let's move on and talk a little bit about one of the most significant pieces of litigation that you've been involved in, General, in the eight years that you were there, and that is uh, uh, litigation uh, after uh, opium abuse and the production, manufacture, and marketing of it. And uh, would you say that's one of the issues you're probably going to be most, most known for? I think so. You know, we. Um, Tennessee was one of the leading states uh, in the multi-state investigation of the three distributors and one manufacturer, Johnson & Johnson, and, and that's the $26 billion settlement uh, that was announced. Um, and frankly, I was wondering if, if we were going to be able to get any money in before I left office. Uh, but I'm, I'm happy to tell you that we, we probably, within the next month or so, will have in Tennessee um, uh, probably over $100 million available to um, to start addressing this problem because, I mean, it's been a serious problem in Tennessee for a long time. Uh, we, I think there are five people a, a day die from um, opioid overdoses in Tennessee, and it's just a terrible, terrible uh, problem, and it's been a long time coming. We've, been, we've had probably 15 to 18 lawyers involved in, uh, in this uh, effort over the years, and we started back in 2016. Uh, but that that particular settlement it was, is the largest uh, civil settlement, excuse me, the second largest civil, civil settlement behind the master settlement agreement with the tobacco manufacturers. And so it's a really, really complicated, um, you know, set of claims. And, and we were happy to reach the settlement. And now we're now we're getting some, some of the funds in to, to help Tennesseans uh, address this uh, this issue. And there's some 
and the legislature's worked with us really well on it, and there's a really good structure uh, in place for uh, allocating those funds to things that really work. Uh, so we're we're very hopeful and optimistic. And but yes, I, that's probably one because of the size of the and the complexity of the case. That's probably the one that people will look back on and and uh, see that we we Tennessee played a significant role. In fact, there were probably like seven states that that were in. Uh, in and there were Republican and Democrat, uh, Democratic uh, AGs involved in it. And that's that's something that the public doesn't see very often because you've got that kind of cooperation uh, with D's and R's that you don't see in any other arena. And um, and frankly, I, I love that about the AG um, uh, community because we're there to solve problems. And this was a big problem. Eddie, you got a so question? We're happy to. I do. And, you know, you brought up a good point, which is uh, the bipartisanship and the AGs around the, the country. But one of the things that, you know, uh, and I was there, you know, Herb, when you first got appointed in 2014 uh, to where you to uh, the AG's office. But we see a lot of um, AGs that are having to get involved in more divisive issues because uh, uh, how I would tramp. Uh, put it is the trampling of states' rights from the federal government. Can you talk a little bit about that, about just how we're seeing the AG so much more involved in kind of the political arena on some of these hot topic issues than what we might have seen historically? Yes, that, that is one of our primary focus um, issues because um, uh, who else would defend the state's rights? Uh, you know, if the uh, if the federal government starts to encroach on those those types of things, and 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 if the constitutional if there are constitutional issues, I know the, the first one that we got involved with was uh, was DAPA, which is the Deferred Action for Parents of Americans, and um, and that was the one where President Obama said uh, that you know he he changed the law with a, a phone call and a pen uh, when he issued the executive directive. And, and change the the law granted rights to you know people that that were not citizens. So um, that's how we that's how we we get involved with those types of things because that, that those are issues that the state should be concerned about is is you know a, a federal government that's uh, going beyond its its authority. So we see that in a lot of issues. Uh, we've got a, a case pending on Title Seven and Title Nine about their. Uh, the interpretation of the word sex in that in that in those statutes and uh, it all goes back to the, basically the issue and that we had in Dobbs the people when they are excluded from weighing in on those particular issues through legislation that causes all sorts of problems and and the, neither the executive branch nor the courts mm -hmm. should be changing laws uh, without the people being involved in it that's that's we end up with the litigation. That's where we have spent years and years of division and uh, so much acrimony. Um, so uh, we're we're very reticent. We've been reticent. I'm sure my successor would be the same way about uh, the, the separation of powers and federalism uh, issues. That's a good point where we can take a break. We will be back in just a minute. You're watching Inside Tennessee.